Hey everyone, today we are looking into the life of Carolina Olsen, a kind of pseudo-celebrity from the small island of Okno, off the coast of southern Sweden, who in the late 19th century became known as the Sleeper of Okno. Here we examine how she came to acquire this strange name, and what lay behind her unusual story. Carolina Olsen was born on the 29th of October 1861 on the island of Okno in southern Sweden. This island lies off the coast of Monsteras, a locality in the province of Kalmar in southern Sweden. The island is small, and the only major settlement there is a town also called Okno. The remote location on a remote island would only add to the mystery surrounding Olsen's life story in the years that followed. Little is known about Carolina's early life, and Okno was certainly not the kind of place which generated much by way of scandal or sensation in the mid-19th century. The Olsen family were typical of the island. Carolina's father was a fisherman, the industry which the community was based around, while her mother was a housewife. She was the second eldest of five children in a family which just about managed to subsist in the circumstances of a poor fishing community. Her four siblings were all boys. The world would never have heard of Carolina Olsen had it not been for the events of the 18th of February, 1876. That day, 14-year-old Carolina hit her head while out on the ice of a late winter freeze on Okno. She developed a toothache immediately afterwards. Isolated rural communities like Okno were still prone to extreme superstitions in the second half of the 19th century and Carolina's family began to believe that a hex or some malign spell had been placed on her by a local witch when the toothache did not subside. And then on the 22nd of February, four days after her fall, Carolina went to bed and by all accounts did not wake up for 32 years. The Olsen family were, quite unsurprisingly, not sure how to deal with this latest twist of fate. For a small, isolated community like this in the 19th century, there was no knowledge base to draw on to try and determine what might be happening to poor Carolina, and the family were too poor to afford to pay for a physician or consultant to be brought from the mainland to examine the sleeping teenager. As a result, they fell back on local folk medicine and the advice of the island's midwife. Carolina's mother would force feed her glasses of sweetened milk and water every day, in the hope that this would wake her from her slumber, or at least keep her alive until she awoke. Eventually, the community at Okno banded together to try and collect money to hire a doctor to come to Okno and assess the situation. However, his medical expertise brought no relief. The physician determined that Carolina was in a coma, and despite using smelling salts and even jabbing her with needles to try and force a reaction, he couldn't wake her. The best he could do was give the Olsons a bottle of tonic, which he advised them to give her daily to keep her body ticking along while she slept. He then left, though he continued to visit weekly thereafter to observe the situation. As he did, the situation changed slightly. Occasionally, Carolina was said to sit up in bed and begin mumbling prayers in a kind of half stupor while other reports assert that she would sometimes sleepwalk. However, Carolina was never known to reach full consciousness, even if she began moving about. Realising that he had no answers for Carolina's condition himself, the first doctor who visited soon began writing letters to newspapers all around Sweden and leading medical journals in hope that some doctor in Stockholm or elsewhere, one with greater training than himself, would read about Carolina's case and possibly have an answer as to what was happening to the girl who was increasingly becoming known as Sovers Kampa Okno, or the Sleeper of Okno. Soon these stories drew more doctors who arrived to Okno hoping to solve the case and awaken the teenager, but they had little success. No one could wake her. There were multiple theories as to what was happening abounded. Some believed she was in some sort of peculiar hibernation. Others claimed Carolina was suffering from a strange psychological disorder, 
though the field of psychology was in its infancy in the late 19th century, and few had any hypotheses as to what it might be. Others suggested she was comatose, or in a state of profound shock about something, while more still proposed that she was actually acting, and that the entire thing was an elaborate hoax being perpetrated by both Carolina and her family. Other unusual features of her case were also noted. For instance, despite her endless slumber, Carolina's hair and nails never seemed to grow and did not need to be cut, while she also continued to seemingly awaken periodically, only to keep her eyes closed and mumble some prayers before returning to bed. Soon the years began to pass, and still Carolina remained asleep. As they did, the methods of trying to wake her became more extreme. In 1892, when she was 30, by which point she had been asleep for 16 years, Carolina was taken to Oskarsham, a large town on the mainland with its own hospital. Here she was treated using electroconvulsive shock therapy, but when this too failed to garner any result, doctors effectively gave up. She was returned to Okno, and there would be no further attempt to solve her situation. Well, all the solutions available in the late 19th century had been exhausted. In 1904, 28 years into her hibernation, Carolina's mother dropped dead, no doubt exhausted from years of caring for her comatose, slumbering daughter. Some stories have it that Carolina woke enough to begin weeping when her mother died, but this may well be an embellishment. In any event, some female neighbours began to aid in Carolina's care and watched over her, while her father and some of her brothers were out on the fishing boats of Okno. It is a pity that her mother died in 1904, for had she survived a few more years, she would have lived long enough to see her daughter escape her perpetual nightmare. On the 3rd of April 1908, at the age of 47, just over 32 years after she first went to sleep, Carolina Olsen suddenly awoke to the astonishment of her father, two brothers and neighbours. When she awoke, Carolina was informed that her mother was dead, as were two of her brothers, who had both drowned out at sea over the years. As her situation revealed itself to her, and as she looked in the mirror, in which she barely recognised herself, Carolina began to weep. Given what had happened over the years, her case now generated massive attention in Sweden and internationally, as it was reported from Stockholm to London and Paris that the sleeper of Okno, whom people might have remembered from the newspapers 30 years earlier, had finally arisen. For her part, Carolina agreed to undergo a psychiatric evaluation and medical testing in Stockholm. During these, her mental faculties were determined to be entirely intact, while she had not noticed the transition of 32 years, and was effectively waking as though she was still a 14-year-old girl, rather than 47 years of age. The physicians at the time noted that she looked extremely youthful for her age, appearing to be no older than 25. But there was no consensus reached as to what had actually happened to her, or the explanation behind her bizarre 32-year sleep. So, what might explain Carolina Olsen's malady? All of the medical explanations which were theorised at the time, whether it was hysteria, dementia, a coma, or some psychological disorder, have been dismissed since. However, one possible explanation is that she was suffering from a very severe case of Klein-Eleven syndrome. Klein-Eleven syndrome is a very rare disorder, which is generally characterised by bouts of excessive sleep, or what is called hypersomnolence. Normally, this manifests as a person sleeping for upwards of 20 hours per day, but in some instances, it can see a person sleeping for days on end. When they wake, the sufferer may exhibit irrationality, lethargy, or even seem extremely disoriented, conditions which might explain the supposed bouts of waking which Carolina experienced, and during which it was claimed she began praying or sleepwalking. The exact cause of the syndrome is not entirely clear even today, and the condition was undiagnosed in the late 19th and early 20th centuries while Carolina Olsen was sleeping at Okno. Hereditary factors may contribute to the appearance of it, with some individuals simply having a genetic disposition to developing the syndrome. 
It may also be owing to a brain malfunction of the hypothalamus, the part of the brain which regulates sleep, appetite and body temperature. The disorder can be very cyclical and sporadic. For instance, someone who suffers from it can go through weeks or months where they are very badly affected, and then it becomes as though they never had the syndrome at all. Moreover, the symptoms are often brought on by a severe incident, like banging one's head, as Carolina did on the 18th of February, 1876. While they also tend to alleviate the appearance of aging, such as occurred in 1908, when Carolina Olsen awoke and looked over 20 years younger than she was in reality. Another typical aspect of the kleiner levin syndrome includes an excessive appetite when one wakes, although these were not present at all in Carolina's case. However, if there is an explanation for the sleeper of Ocno's case, then kleiner levin syndrome may be it. There is also a possibility that the entire episode was a highly elaborate hoax. In 1910, Carolina met with a psychiatrist called Dr. Frodenstrom. After assessing her condition, he published a paper on her condition in 1912, in which he stated that it was an unclear case of hibernation, but there was evidence that Olsen did periodically wake up and would express sorrow and anger. It is unclear if this was a reference to her periodic sleepwalking and mumbled prayers, but Frodenstrom speculated that Olsen was a severe hypochondriac who believed following her accident in 1876 that she was seriously ill, and that thereafter she remained still with her eyes closed to elicit sympathy. Those who have argued that it was a ruse or hoax of some kind along these lines note that her mother possibly helped her in her deception, and after she died, one of her brothers took over this role. Then, when this carer died in 1907, she abandoned the fabrication altogether shortly thereafter. As with the theory that she was suffering from Kleiner Levin syndrome, the idea that her 32 year hibernation was simply an elaborate hoax also remained unproven, though it seems difficult to believe that she could have deceived the doctors who administered the electroshock therapy to her in 1892. Following the initial flurry of medical tests, Carolina attempted to return to Ocno and live with her father and two remaining brothers. However, the case of the sleeper of Ocno generated such interest that their little cottage on the sleepy Swedish island was inundated with so many visitors and newspapermen that they left their home and settled elsewhere for a time. Eventually, many months later, they returned to their island. Carolina lived out a long life here. She died on the 5th of April 1950 at the age of 88, occasionally being visited by people who were interested in seeing the famed sleeper of Ocno in the flesh. Her case remains unsolved to this day. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Carolina Olsen or the sleeper of Ocno. I hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you thought of her case down below in the comments. Do you think it was a hoax? Do you think she was hibernating? What do you think was going on with her while she was sleeping for so long? This was suggested in the comments, so make sure if you have any suggestions, also leave them in the comments. And I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on to get all my videos as soon as I upload them. That's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.